Hi YouTube, it's Shanelli here. In this video, I'm gonna be addressing a topic that I've seen come across, like comments and also emails that's come up in emails too. Um, basically asking for a little bit more of an explanation around taking the stock market basics to the next level. So a lot of young people watched the stock market basics video and were like, this is actually really interesting. Now I've, he I've heard about like doing this on my phone or on my laptop. So uh, with Robo Advisors, how does this apply? Like what is the next step? How does the flow work and what can I, uh, expect from that process. So that's what I'm going to be covering here, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to keep it pretty general so that it's kind of just to like calm your nerves if you've been a little bit nervous or um, afraid of like the whole process and not really sure what it looks like, sounds like, feels like. If you have any, you know, specific topics that you want to request, definitely feel free to email me at missbehelpful.gmail.com or call me directly and leave me a message. I really have uh, been looking to post more video responses to some of the calls I've been getting um, with messages. So you can do that at 774-231-8522. Okay, so jumping into this video, first I wanna start by saying that when you invest in the stock market, it can look a lot of different ways. Um, and back in the day, it was pretty much just done for you through your employer. A lot of people had pensions or 401ks all through their full-time job. So they didn't really think about this stuff and they didn't really have their hands involved in any of this stuff. But the more time has passed and like now there's technology out and a lot of companies are actually removing pensions you know a lot of jobs don't really have that anymore unless you work for the government and even some companies are that are new and small tech companies and things like that are starting to remove 401ks even as an option so that means that investing for your future is going to be really on you now more than ever um, so that being said especially young people like Millennials and the generation right after Gen Z these are going to be people that are going to have to learn investment in a way that their parents probably and generations before them probably didn't but I know that sounds scary with the technology technological changes that have been happening it's actually pretty easy to do so if you're interested in investing with a robo advisor, that means that you're gonna want to be pretty hands off. You're gonna want to just set this up online in a way that just kind of automatically happens. And you don't really have to know a lot of details about how the stock market works or what all you know happens when you choose this specific investment or stock or bond versus that one. If you're not really interested in going into that level of detail, then robo advising might be right for you. So there's a lot of different robo advisors, advisors out there. And what I would recommend is just doing a little bit of research first to find out which one you think matches you the best um, and this is the same kind of thing as like when you have uh, some cash available that you want to invest in or save in a bank first you have to go and research which banks are available to you and which one you want to use you could really bank with any bank out there just the same way you could choose any robo advisor but there's going to be a few factors that you're going to want to consider does the robo advisor have a minimum balance required to start an account with them because if they do if you don't have that minimum if you don't meet that minimum balance then you got to pick another robo advisor um, and there's plenty of robo advisors out there that don't have a minimum or the minimum that they do have is pretty low so anybody and everybody could participate in the stock market and in investing nowadays which is really really great um, and so the second thing you want to think about is what fees they have because if you're investing a little bit of money every month and then the fees are kind of eating away at what you're putting in you're not really going to see a lot of results right and you're going to be it's going to be eating away at your profits or at your potential growth that you might want to see so it's best if you actually understand okay how much are the fees going to be and compare and contrast different robo advisors based on the fees you might want to look for one that's a lower fee if you are investing not a ton of money um, or you might want to look for one that has a higher fee if you have specific requirements that you want like you want customer service and you want access to a direct person on the line that can help you um you know those things you tend to pay a little bit more for more direct customer service um so the other thing about these uh robo advisors is that most of them are all pretty much all electronic it's very hard to get them on the phone so if you're not comfortable with that then you might want to consider comparing and contrasting some of the reviews around contacting a customer service person because for the most part when i need help i just chat the live chat or email them and i'm fine with that but if you're somebody who's not really cool with that you're going to want to think about that too so there's plenty of other factors but those are some of the most common ones that people use to compare robo advisors um, but once you've picked the robo advisor that you like um, I've talked to people about the ones that I use in previous videos I use betterment for my retirement and then I use wealthfront for general taxable investing and so once you pick the ones that you like you're gonna then go ahead and decide what type of account you want so just because you figured out which bank you want to use doesn't mean you know the type of account right you have to go to the bank and say I want a checking account or I want a savings account or I want a CD or a money market account there's all these different types of accounts 
accounts and they all have different perks and benefits. So it's the same thing when it comes to robo-advising. Once you pick the robo-advisor that you like, you create an account with them on the app, you download the app, you create your account, your profile, and they're going to say, what type of account do you want to create today? Or what is your goal? And so if your goal for the account you want to create is to save for long term, you know, maybe retirement or something like that, then you're going to want to think about a specific retirement account, like a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Uh, but if you're not sure you want to actually lock that money away up to retirement and you want to actually think about maybe saving for a big car or, uh, or a big ticket item like a car or a trip, a graduation trip coming up in a few years or something else like that, then you might want to do general taxable investing. And so that's going to be, you know, a general account that doesn't have the perks and, um, you know, the things that the benefits that retirement accounts offer. So once you figure out the type of account that you want, um, and that might take a little bit of research because you're going to want to make sure you're comfortable with the benefits and the terms of the account you chose, uh, then you're kind of ready to like figure out what kind of investor you are. The great thing about robo advisors is that they know that most people are not like fluent in investment language. Like they know most people don't know about investing in the stock market and all these terms can be a little tricky. So they make it really nice and easy by giving you a little quiz, right? They'll ask you like, you know, if you put money into the stock market and all of a sudden the stock market just drops a lot and you were losing money quickly, what would you do? Would you continue to put money in and just kind of feel like, hey, this happens? Would you immediately take all of the money out? You know, what would your reaction be? So you answer the question honestly, be honest. Don't think about like, oh, I guess I would do this because that's what I think is right. No, do answer it based on what you know your gut tells you you would do in that situation because that gives them the best chance of matching you to um, a mix of, of stocks and bonds that is right for you and depending on the type of investor you are. So that means... If you're really aggressive and you're really risky and you don't mind taking big risks with your money, then of course they're going to give you a lot more stocks and a lot less bonds or maybe even no bonds at all if, if you're really young because they know that you have a long time to recover from any you know ups and downs and ups and downs in the, in the stock market. But if you are a little older or you are very conservative and you don't like the idea of risking a lot of money, then they might give you way more bonds and a little less stocks because they don't want your um, money to be kind of up and down constantly and bonds are a lot more secure and so they you know you're a little bit a lot more comfortable knowing that your money is a lot more guaranteed to be there compared to stocks which really don't have much of a guarantee so uh, that once they do once they ask you that quiz they're gonna give you um, a recommendation like hey here's what we suggest you um, mix up your that you mix up in your account based on your quiz and so that they call an allocation right your asset allocation would be like maybe 10% in stocks and 90% in bonds. That is really, really conservative. That might be somebody who's retiring very soon. Or it might be like, um, you know, 80% in, in stocks and 20% in bonds. Whatever that is, that's going to, you can go ahead and grab the little like toggle, the little, the little symbol thing in the app and you can move it up or down. So you can be more risky or you can be less risky and it'll start to change your allocation, your mix based on where you put, you know, where you toggle it to. So that basically will tell them, okay, now that you've moved it, maybe you thought you were, you want to be a little more risky than they suggested. Then you move it up a little bit more risky. And then they'll say, okay, great. Do you want to confirm 90% stocks, 10% bonds? If you're comfortable with that mix, you press okay. And then they do all the work for you. This is the nice thing. They will just spit out to you all of the investments that are going to be in your you know, portfolio based on your allocation. So if you have a lot of stocks, then maybe a lot of the stocks that they'll have will be a mix of large cap uh, companies or small cap companies or mid cap companies. These basically means the size, how big or how small are these companies in the stock market. And um, so once you have a good mix of that, you know, that's called diversification. You want to have a lot of big companies, small companies. You want to have uh, companies from all the different sectors and industries, right? They do all that work for you. So once you kind of see the list, if you're even a little bit confused about what it means, what I recommend you do is just take a snapshot, like a screen grab on it of your on your phone, and then later you can go and do some research and like find out what exactly are the stocks that are in this you know exchange traded fund or ETF. If a lot of these um, robo advisors use ETFs, so that would be like a group of companies, and they'll tell you the symbol. Let's say it's VTI. That doesn't mean anything to most people, and they know that. So your job would be take a screenshot of it. Later, you look up VTI on the computer and you'll be able to see what exactly it means. So at least you're starting with a plan and then you can always go back in and change it later.
So once you do that, you can, the final step is basically linking your account to uh, your, your bank account. That way you can make deposits. So you link them by saying, okay, this is my bank account information. This is my name, all that stuff. And then they make a transfer, like a small transfer of like say two cents or three cents into your bank account. A couple of days later, they ask you to confirm, hey, how much money did we deposit into your account? You type in two cents and they'll be like, okay, great. There's no way somebody else would have known that. So that's how they know it's you. This is their way of putting security measures in place so that Somebody else doesn't use your bank account to fund an investment account. So once all that security stuff is done, you'll be ready to basically sync up your bank account with your investment account, and then you can start making deposits. You can deposit a one-time deposit, like tomorrow I want to put $50 in the account, or you can make an automatic recurring transfer, which is what I do, and I love this because it just takes away my homework. Like I don't have to do anything. Basically, every month when I get paid, the same day I get paid, automatic transfer happens from my checking account into my investment account in the robo advising app and then it just gets invested and i don't really have to even do anything or even think about it um and so that's the beauty of robo advising which is why i really love this um as a strategy and as an option for young people who aren't you know too familiar with all of the complicated stuff that comes along with investing in the stock market uh so i hope this video kind of helped you understand a little bit more about how robo advising works um the last question that i have gotten a little bit it, um frequently is okay once i set that all up let's say i want to take the money out how does that work it works the same way you put the money in you literally just go into the app and you say i want to make a withdrawal and i and i want to ma make sure that it happens on this day so you type in the, you put in the day you put in the amount that you want to withdraw say it's 50 dollars on friday great you put that information in and then on friday they will transfer the 50 dollars to the checking account that you linked and so then you'll be able to have access to that money but anytime you take money out of an investment account, you have to understand there might be some tax penalties. So this is something that you might want to chat or email, live chat, call them and just ask questions about those penalties first before, or even just the tax um, impact that it might have uh, when you file your taxes, just so that you're clear on what it's gonna do and what tax year it's going to affect and all that kind of stuff. Um, that is pretty much all of it, right, in a nutshell. And I know it's a lot of information, but if you still have other questions or comments, definitely feel free to post them below in the comment section. Um, I'll do my best to go through and answer them and comment and other people just jump in as well and be part of the conversation. Um, if you have a specific question or topic, definitely feel free to call me at 774-231-8522 or email me. My email still works at missbehelpful at gmail.com. And that is all. I hope this helps people, you know, get a little bit closer to making that brave, bold first step of just getting started, downloading the app and getting it set up um, because it definitely makes a big difference because only about one third of, of people under the age of 30 are even investing. So I hope this, this video helps to change that statistic even just a little bit. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys. So till next time, peace.